Bitcoin is close to its all-time highs and the question is, are we currently in a heated market? What are long-term investors doing? What are short-term investors doing? Who is buying? Who is selling? Where will momentum bring us? Let's have a look at all that data in this video. And let's start off with liquidity or rather the opposite of liquidity, the illiquid long-term holder supply. So the illiquid supply of Bitcoin is shown here in blue. And whenever people are taking profit, the illiquid supply supply tends to go down. Whenever people tend to accumulate and dollar cost average in, this tends to go up. And we are at an all-time high. More than 14 million Bitcoin are illiquid. And that has a direct leverage effect on the price, right? When the majority of Bitcoin isn't liquid, only a small fraction gets actively traded, then just a little bit of additional demand can push up the price quite a bit. And so we can see how the active short-term holder supply here in red tends to peak whenever a bull run ends. And it tends to bottom when we are relatively cheap. Currently, we are still quite low on that short-term holder liquidity, which would indicate that we could potentially go higher from here. And so check this out, the actively traded supply. We had a peak at the beginning of 2021 when Bitcoin was at around 40k. It still went up slightly afterwards to 60k, but the majority of subsequent gains had been made in the altcoins at the time. The Bitcoin dominance crashed after January of 2021. We see another such peak in March of this year, again when Bitcoin's price peaked as well, and it's coming back down to normal levels. So even though the price is close to an all-time high, we don't necessarily see that much active trading. It doesn't really seem like we are in a heated market, at least for Bitcoin. And so we can also see how this liveliness index isn't currently growing. When it's growing, more and more supply hits the market from the previously dormant wallets. And once there's enough such supply and not enough demand anymore from new investors, then the rally stops. Currently, even though we are at very high levels in the Bitcoin price, we do not see more dormant Bitcoin hitting the market. Only when this is going up can we potentially see a price top. Now let's compare short-term holders versus long-term holders. They do react quite differently when the price goes up and down. Let's also look at two different metrics. Have a look at this chart. This is the intercycle capital rotation ratio. And it's simply a very fancy way of saying when are the short-term holders active, when are the long-term holders active. And the long-term holders tend to buy at bottoms and they tend to sell at price tops and vice versa. The short-term holders tend to ride the current wave and when that wave stops, they tend to exit rather quickly. And so we had seen a lot of short-term speculation heating up at around March and April of this year. And so interestingly enough, we can even see this in the Bitcoin metrics. What actually happened most during this time was speculation in meme coins. So the meme coin trading went really parabolic. On Bitcoin, we don't yet see a strong growth of that short-term trading metrics. However, once we look at the meme coin statistics in a second, I believe things in the risk on area of the market are getting active again. Now back to Bitcoin. This is the realized hodl ratio and it tended to time the bottoms and tops quite nicely. Again, it compares the long-term traders, so the traders between one and two years, to the short-term traders, the traders between one and two weeks. And when the short-term traders are very active, we tend to be at price tops. When the long-term holders, however, are comparatively active, that's when we are at price bottoms. So currently we are clearly not cheap. Whatever positive price action we are expecting has to come from positive momentum. It cannot come from cheap valuations. The market is far from dormant. Now the issue is that those very nice buying opportunities only tend to happen every four years. So are you really going to wait until January of 2027 to buy Bitcoin again? If you had, for example, not bought in January of 2020 because you thought we are not dirt cheap, you would have missed out on a rally from 10k all the way to 60k. So there's definitely more risk in the market. It's important to have proper risk management to potentially use stop losses or to potentially diversify across asset classes that aren't that well correlated to Bitcoin. Don't take a HELOC now, right? Don't take debt on top of your house to then buy Bitcoin with it. We are not currently experiencing dirt cheap prices. Even short term, we aren't necessarily that cheap. Check out the short term holder unrealized loss. Whenever this peaks, we also tend to be at least in the short term 
at comparatively good buying opportunities. Currently, we are not there, which kind of makes sense because we are close to the all time high, of course. Now, here's why I've got the impression that things are heating up again. Check out the number of subscribers on this channel over the last 90 days. This is hitting new highs again. And what's causing all of those views and all of those subscribers? It's mainly meme coins. And so it appears as if the market has split. There's on the one hand Bitcoin with the ETF with all the long term investors. We aren't necessarily cheap there, but we might go higher, right? The momentum is positive. On the other hand, there is the meme coin market, which tends to be very decoupled now. The meme coin market is pretty much player versus player. Everybody knows that it's not something productive that we're engaging in, but it keeps activity somewhat high. It keeps the lights on for all the centralized exchanges as well. And I do believe at some point there will be another narrative. We used to have the ICOs, then we had DeFi. Now we've got the meme coins. Something potentially more productive will come again. Now, I personally sold a lot of my Bitcoin very close to its all time high. Two days after we hit the all time high in Bitcoin, I sold. And I did this using on chain metrics, similar to what had been presented in this video. And down below in the premium membership, there are a lot of tutorials on how to do that timing, on how to use on chain data, on how to time the market. There's an endless amount of videos. Feel free to check it out. The recent tutorial is a summary of my favorite macro indicators. And of course, I also publish regularly in premium my view on the market. Where's the capital flowing? Where is the attention flowing? And I also share, of course, what kind of things I buy and sell. There's also a one week money back guarantee. So in case you don't like what you see in premium, feel free to just message me within the first week and I'll refund you 100%. If you got something out of this video, feel free to subscribe. I publish videos regularly. A like would be very much appreciated as well. It helps the channel grow. Last but not least, there's also a free telegram. You can also join that. Link is as well down below. See you over there. Cheers.